In this lesson, we'll look at how to solve systems of equations using the addition method. In a previous lesson, we learned how to solve systems of equations using the substitution method. But if you have a system in which none of the variables has a coefficient of 1, then the substitution method can be difficult and the addition method becomes an easier way to approach it. So, here are the steps. First, make sure both equations are in the form ax plus by equals c. You want the x and the y on one side of the equal mark, the constant on the other side. Next, use multiplication to make either the x coefficients or the y coefficients add up to zero. Third, add the equations together. Because either the x's or the y's have coefficients that add up to zero, your x or your y will cancel out and you'll be left with an equation that contains only one variable. So you solve that equation and plug that answer back into one of the original equations to find the other variable. Let's look at an example and bring it all together. We will solve 3x plus 2y equals 48 and 9x minus 8y equals negative 24. First of all, I'm recopying the system so that you can see. I, I spread the variables out so that I can have room to put the multipliers in there. Now we have to decide whether we want to make the x's equal and opposite or whether we want to make the y's equal but opposite. Now normally I would probably do the, the y's because they already have the signs built in. They already are positive and negative. And remember, because I'm trying to get them to add up to zero, I need one of them to be positive and one negative. But just so you can see how to handle it, I'm going to go ahead and uh, eliminate the x variable. So I want the x's coefficients to be equal but opposite. So I need to think, what is the least common multiple of 3 and 9? And the answer is 9. So I could make both coefficients here. Uh, either negative 9 or positive 9. Now the bottom one is already positive 9. That means I could make the top one negative 9 and then they would add up to 0. So I need to think, what do I have to multiply by so that 3x becomes negative 9x? And the answer is negative 3. So because I have multiplied this by negative 3, I have to multiply the rest of the equation by negative 3. Now, my top equation has now become negative 9x minus 6y equals negative 144, and I have copied that here. The bottom equation I did not change, so I have copied that here. Now, if I add them together, negative 9x plus 9x is 0, negative 6y minus 8y is negative 14y, and negative 144 minus 24 is negative 168. If I divide both sides by negative 14, I come up with y equals 12. Now all I need to do is find the x that goes with that y. So to do that, I will plug the 12 back into either one of my original equations. You can choose whichever you think looks the easiest to deal with. And I choose the top one. So I'm saying 3x plus 2y, we think y is 12, equals 48. So solve this equation for x. 2 times 12 is 24. Subtract 24 from both sides. Divide both sides by 3, x is 8. So our solution, we think, is 8, 12. Now I'm going to check it here. 3 times 8 plus 2 times 12 is supposed to equal 48 because that's what my original top equation says. So we just need to check that 3 times 8 is 24, 2 times 12 is 24, 24 plus 24 is 48. Looks good. Okay, second equation. 9 times 8 
minus 8 times 12 equals negative 24. So let's make sure seven, uh, 9 times 8 is 72 minus 8 times 12. 8 times 12 is 96. So 72 minus 96 is negative 24. And so that one's correct. And now we are sure that our solution is 8 comma 12. Now I'm going to tell you, this took a minute to do because we had to write it down and talk through it. But if you have a calculator in your hand, it is so quick and easy to punch in 3 times 8 plus 2 times 12, hit the equal button, and make sure that it shows 48. It only takes a second, and you will save yourself lots of trouble. Look at all the places in here that there are room, there's room to make all kinds of sign mistakes and multiplication mistakes. And the longer a problem is, the more likely that's going to happen. So if it only takes a second to check your work, please do that. And with a calculator, it only takes you a second. So I would definitely recommend that you check every solution to a system. All right, now let's solve another one by addition. Let's solve 3x minus 4y equals 11 and 2x plus 3y equals negative 4. Now the first thing I will do is copy down my system in a way that where it's spread out so that I have room to put my multipliers in between the terms. And now we have to decide how we want to solve it. We could choose to make the x terms equal but opposite. And then we would want to think, what is the least common multiple of 3 and 2? And that would be 6. So we could choose to make the top x term 6x and the bottom x term negative 6x. Or we could look at the y terms and we could say, well, the least common multiple of 4 and 3 is 12. So I could make the top term negative 12y and I could make the bottom term positive 12y. And it really doesn't matter which you do. I'm going to choose to eliminate the x terms. So I'm going to be using multipliers that will make the top term positive 6x and the bottom term negative 6x. So what could I multiply by so that the top term becomes positive 6x? And I say we could multiply everything by 2. Now the bottom one I want to be negative 6x, so I'm going to multiply everything by negative 3. That's going to give us 6x minus 8y equals 22. See, 2 times 3x is 6x. Negative 2 times 4y is negative 8y, and so on. And for the bottom, negative 6x minus 9y equals 12. Now let's add those together. The x's will cancel out, leaving us with negative 17y. And the right side is 34. Divide both sides by negative 17, and you get y equals negative 2. Now we want to take our negative 2 that we got for y and plug it into either equation. I chose the bottom equation. So 2x plus 3 times negative 2 equals negative 4. Now 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And now add 6 to both sides and divide both sides by 2 and you get x equals 1. So 1 comma negative 2 is our solution. But if you're smart, you will take your calculator or just quickly think through. Make sure 3 times 1 minus 4 times negative 2 really does equal 11. And also make sure 2 times 1 plus 3 times negative 2 really does equal negative 4. Okay, another example we can look at together. 3x equals 4y plus 1 and 3y equals 1 minus 4x. Now the first thing we notice about this system is that the terms are not arranged in the way we're accustomed to. We're used to seeing the x and the y on the left side and the constant on the right side. So very first thing, let's move this 4y to the left side of the equation. And then let's look at the second equation. The 4x is on the right side, so let's move it over to the left side and that will make it positive 4x plus 3y equals 1. 
Now let me copy the system down where it's all spread out, where I have room to write my multipliers in there. And let's decide how we want to solve this. We could either make the x coefficients positive 12 and negative 12, or we could make the y coefficients negative 12 and positive 12, because uh, the least common multiple of 4 and 3 is 12. Now I'm going to eliminate the y coefficients, or the y term, this time because the signs are already set up for us. The signs are already negative and positive. And so I'm going to choose to make the, the top y term negative 12y and the bottom y term positive 12y. So what should I multiply this term by to make it a negative 12y? And the answer would be 3. So let's multiply the entire equation by 3. And what can I multiply by the bottom equation to make it positive 12y? And the answer would be 4. So now when we multiply these out, 9x minus 12y equals 3. And 16x plus 12y equals 4. Okay, now let's combine them. And we will have 25x equals 7. Divide both sides by 25, and you have 7 over 25. Now, two things happen at this point. One thing is you think, I must have messed up because I was hoping for a whole number answer. But that's not necessarily the case. Some of these will have fractional answers. And the second thing is you're thinking, it's going to be a lot of work to plug that 7 over 25 in up here and solve for y. And it might be a little more work than you want to do. So instead of doing instead of plugging it in, let's go around the other way and let's just do another uh, addition method. So we'll start with the same system, but this time instead of eliminating the y coefficients or y terms, we will eliminate the x terms. So let's make the x terms be positive 12x and negative 12x. Now what would I have to multiply by for the top equation? so that it has a x term of positive 12x and I would need to multiply by 4. And what would I need to multiply by on the bottom equation to make it become negative 12x? And I would need to multiply by negative 3. Okay, that's going to give us 12x minus 16y equals 4 and it's going to, on the bottom, it's going to give us negative 12x minus 9y equals negative 3. Okay, add these two together. We'll come up with negative 25y equals 1. Divide both sides by negative 25. And you will have 1 over negative 25. But we never leave the negative in the denominator, so I've moved it to the top. And now our solution is 7 over 25 and negative 1 over 25. So now since this is such an unexpected answer, we you know usually expect whole numbers. So I would like to check this. And so let's take a look. I've copied down my system where the x and y terms are on the left and here's the solution that we think we have and this is easy to do on a calculator although this one's really not hard to do uh, in your head either here is the top equation where I've substituted the 7 over 25 and negative 1 over 25 for x and y now if you did this mentally 3 times 7 is 21 so 21 over 25 and negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4, so this makes plus 4 over 25. Now 21 plus 4 is 25. On the bottom we have 25, and 25 over 25 is 1. So this checks mentally, but also if you wanted to check it in the calculator, you could do 3 times 7 divided by 25 minus 4 times negative 1 divided by 25. Press the equal key and make sure that the display shows 1. For the second equation, we'll still plug in the same x and y, and 
let's just do it together uh, mentally. 4 times 7 is 28. For the second term, 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So 28 plus negative 3 is 25, and the denominator would be 25, so that simplifies to 1. But on the calculator, you would just punch 4 times 7 divided by 25 plus 3 times negative 1 divided by 25 and press the equal key. And I want to remind you that the negative key would not be the same as the minus key. Uh, normally, the negative key is on the bottom row of keys, at least on the, the TI calculator that we usually use in our class. The negative is on the bottom row of keys, and it usually looks like a minus sign in parentheses. So, uh, either by calculator or mentally, this is not hard to check. Um, I would like you to be familiar with how to do it on the calculator because in a testing situation where you've got so many things on your mind, you might not want to stop and check by hand. So I would like for you to know how to check on the calculator just to make it quicker for you on test day.